Pakistan is about to hold another election. The opposition is complaining of unprecedented political repression. Will the outcome make a difference this time? And just how much influence is the army having on Pakistan's politics? This is Inside Story. Hello there and welcome to the program. I'm Nastasia Tay. As Pakistan prepares for general elections, they're being overshadowed by concerns about fairness and political unrest. Former Prime Minister Imran Khan is currently in jail after being convicted on corruption charges. He's barred from the vote. His party accuses the government of launching a crackdown on its members. Khan's rival, another former Prime Minister, Nawaz Sharif, has reconciled with army generals and appears set to win back power. Khan blames the military for forcing him from office, with help from the United States, and that's also raising questions about its role in Pakistan's politics. But whatever the outcome of this vote, the economy is in trouble, with high youth unemployment, soaring inflation, and an external debt of more than $120 billion. So how might this election affect Pakistan's future? Well, we'll discuss all this and more in a few moments with our guests, but first, this report. Anger and fear, but also a glimmer of hope. With parliamentary elections due in less than a week, Pakistan is experiencing turbulent times. The government is accused of carrying out a crackdown, especially on the former governing party, Pakistan Tehreek Insaf, or PTI. Never in the history of Pakistan, the entire leadership of political parties currently either in jails or hiding. The way they are trying to get out of the election, all is in the front of the public. We will appeal, but we still hope that they will get justice. The PTI's leader and former Prime Minister Imran Khan is in jail on more than a hundred charges that his supporters say are politically motivated. His party now faces the centre-right Pakistan Muslim League. That party took power after Khan was forced out in 2022, after falling out with Pakistan's military and losing a no-confidence vote. Its leader, Nawaz Sharif, is a three-time former prime minister who's been at odds with the military for most of his career, but is now seen as having its support. 18,000 candidates are competing for seats in parliament in the polls in less than a week. More than 120 million people are eligible to cast their ballots, making the country's democracy one of the largest in the world. There have been um, speculations in the past uh, about the possibility of elections, uh, at times about uh, severity of the weather, sometimes about security, uh, sometimes about even um, Iran, uh, Pakistan uh, skirmish that uh, we experienced uh, last month but we have been consistent. At the heart of the elections, tackling inflation, generating jobs for young people, and putting an end to growing political polarization. Whoever wins faces a raft of challenges ahead. Veronica Pedroza, Al Jazeera for Inside Story. Well, let's now bring in our guests. In Islamabad, we have Maria Iqbal Tarana, she is the General Secretary of the Human Rights Wing of the Pakistan People's Party. It's seen as centre-left. It's one of the three largest parties in Pakistan. In Lahore, we have Senator Syed Ali Zafar. He's a senator for Imran Khan's PTI party. He's also a barrister and a former caretaker federal minister for law and justice. And also in Islamabad is Javed Rahman. He's a journalist and the parliamentary correspondent for The Nation newspaper and website. Welcome to you all. Thanks for joining us on Inside Story at this very busy time. I've been wondering about the, the atmosphere leading up to the elections and, and just how campaigning has been going. Uh, Javed, let me ask you that to begin with. By some accounts, campaigning this time around has been fairly muted. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, these elections, uh, we have not seen any election festivity as yet. Four days are remaining. And uh, about a uh, controversial election, these, uh, this is actually... Uh, 12th general election in Pakistan, and every election, after every election, we have heard that these are controversial elections. In 1977, 
Pakistan People's Party, their uh, allegations of rigging were there. In 1988, there was accusation of a vote rigging. In 1990s, there was allegation of rigging again and a political unrest created after that. In 2013, that was very uh, famous elections. What maneuvering in some of the constituency that lead to the sit-in and a longer sit-in in the Pakistan. And 2013, there was uh, also uh, result at uh, RTS system, result transmission system uh, fault in that system. So these were uh, uh, technical glitches in that uh, elections that lead to uh, uh, say uh, the o uh, opposition party that these are controversial elections. We have seen that so many uh, uh, things about the election. This election will be different from uh, 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 from rest of the election. Actually, three factors are there. First one is uh, independent uh, participation of ind independent candidates. Second is uh, you can say turnout will be different. And third one is you can say that the female participation. This mm -hmm. in this election, so many uh, 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 women's uh, uh, females candidates were awarded tickets. Jabeer, I want to get into some of that in, in just a minute, but you mentioned how controversial these elections are being regarded. Obviously, other elections have also been controversial, but particularly this time round, we've been hearing, particularly from the PTI party, that there's been a broad crackdown on your candidates. So let me address this question then to, to Ali. Have your candidates and supporters been targeted? I understand campaign materials were also disappearing. There have been reports of that. Your logo has been banned. How has campaigning been going for you? Um, thank you very much. We, as PTI, uh, we were ousted from government in um, April 2022. And since then, we've been trying, at least I've been in at least four cases uh, in the Supreme Court. I've been representing PTI, where, we, where we've been trying to get to these elections. Finally, a date has been given on the 8th of February, but for the past four months, uh, and even before that, PTI has been targeted uh, with the aim that uh, our leadership should not be able to campaign, our workers should not be able to reach the crowds and the people to uh, lecture it for the purpose of the election. And um, uh, finally, our symbol, which is a key to any political party contesting, has been taken away. So if you look at the past, uh, it started off with arrests of the main leadership. Uh, then uh, the fear of arrest became so serious that many of the leaders actually could not uh, even appear uh, in person uh, in the public for fear of arrest. Uh, we all know that uh, the, the founding chairman of the party, Imran Khan, there are cases against him and convictions upon convictions are being um, given against him in many cases. Um, in a matter of 15 days, three convictions uh, have been given against him, and he's been sentenced to almost 30 years in prison. Uh, then the, uh, all the rallies that we were trying to hold for the purpose of the elections were disrupted. Uh, the workers who attended the, uh, the, the rallies, or were trying to attend the rallies, were arrested. Uh, eventually, uh, the Election Commission of Pakistan, which is supposed to hold free and fair elections, they took our symbol away also. Now, without a symbol, that means that the party cannot field its candidates. So in this election, PTI is actually out of the election race because we don't have our symbol and we don't have any candidates on our symbol. Although we have nominee candidates who are fighting on different symbols and eventually will come back into the fold of the political party PTI if they succeed. But right now there's confusion amongst the people mm -hmm. because there's so many symbols that they don't know where to vote. Let me ask you a um, bit more about that, Ali, because uh, I think a lot of people might think, oh, it's just a logo. As long as people can understand that you are from the same party, people could vote that way. But you mentioned the confusion there, and I understand that illiteracy rates in parts of the country are only 40% uh, 40 actually. So obviously the image actually has a, has a, huge, a huge power. 
Can you tell us a little bit about how your party has been trying to deal with that? Have they replaced the logo? Uh, how are you trying to bring people together? You see what um, uh, in, a, in a country like Pakistan, uh, we have uh, a constitution which says that a political party is a fundamental right of people to form a political party as a fundamental right of the political party to contest elections and then to uh, have a symbol. Uh, the symbol was taken away a few years ago. A law was passed that a political party cannot contest without a symbol. The matter went to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court said that it is, you know, in a country where literacy is not that high, it is the symbol with which people identify a political party. So if you take away a political party, you are a uh, symbol from a political party, mm -hmm. then you are actually disfranchising uh, a lot of people in the public who will not know who to mm -hmm. vote. Well, so let, let me bring in Maria here, because I want to ask her about her experience and, and their party's experience of campaigning so far. We've been hearing about a crackdown on PTI supporters. Has your experience of campaigning been, been free and fair so far this election? Thank you very much for inviting me to your show. Uh, well, I won't agree with one of the panelists when he called these elections controversial. I think it's very interesting elections because uh, we are just ignoring the fact that uh, we have the population of 250 million. And out of 250 million, 120 voters are being registered. So more than a half of the population is going to vote this year in 2024. And out of 124, uh, 28 million, there is a 40 million new votes have been registered since 2018. So it's going to be a very interesting election because half, more than half of the population is the young people. Mm. We must not um, uh, forget um, uh, also that the uh, winters in Pakistan at this time and uh, we have just uh, received a first snowfall in um, northern areas of Pakistan, in Khabarikupakhtunkhwa and in also Balochistan. So we, all we are being concerned about uh, turnout at this point and um, as a political worker if you ask me, uh, chairman of my um, uh, Pakistan People's Party, he started his campaign in November. So, uh, you know, since then we are being involved and being engaged in this process of running a campaign. And uh, we started it from Khabar Pakhtunkhwa. We went to Balochistan, all the cities in um, Khabar Pakhtunkhwa, Balochistan, Punjab, and now in Sindh, we have um, received um, a, a huge amount of appreciation because. I think politics is all about the energy, experience, and the time. And uh, people of um, young people of Pakistan at this time, when they are being uh, aware of the social media, media mediums, they are more uh, well aware about their regional politics, international politics, because these are not the dark ages where we are being living now. So we cannot figure out how it's going to be and uh, which party to choose, mm -hmm. uh, how the contestants um, are going to represent Pakistan. Because I think at this point, every young people, as very uh, young people of Pakistan, uh, are very much excited because they understand democracy is very important for the uh, Pakistan until and unless uh, we are being uh, ignoring the fact that uh, you know ignoring that uh, electronic uh, process must not take place I think it uh, we need to give a new hope to uh, people who are going to take part uh, for the first time and mm -hmm. they, they are um, not yeah. less in a number so, they are 40 million and, uh, and there's so, a lot of issues yeah. that are very close to their hearts which we'll discuss but just to be clear have you faced any kind of, of restrictions, said or unsaid, when it comes to your campaigning in your party? No, not at all. It's all right because um, I think uh, everybody has okay. been uh, given this chance of uh, to run the campaign smoothly. I'm sure the uh, rest of the parties, they have been also running their campaign uh, smoothly. Uh, one thing I would say here, uh, um, but, uh, that was a decision of uh, election commission uh, that um, uh, they didn't allot uh, that um, uh, 
uh, the symbol uh, for to PTI. So I think uh, that was the thing as a political worker. I must say uh, it's very important because it has happened to us in the past as well because uh, Pakistan People's Party is the only party I think in this region which has a legacy of a 60, 57 years. So in 57 years time we have gone through this electoral pr process many a times. So um, um, uh, do not forget because we have faced uh, huge um, restrictions in 70s since uh, 1977 to 80s in 90s in um, uh, Musharraf's time. So you know that was I think a part of uh, uh, the growth of uh, political system of Pakistan as well. So now we have come to this conclusion actually mm -hmm. this hope of taking a part in uh, um, uh, pr process is very important. Democracy is very important, and a new hope is very important. And I, we are very hopeful okay. that Pakistan people of Pakistan will choose their okay. uh, candidates. Uh, I, I want wisely. to. I want to give Ali yes. a, um, a moment there to respond because I saw you you smile at, at one of the things that Maria said around how all parties have been fairly allowed to participate in this election. I suspect you don't agree with that. Yes, it's just a fact that um, People's Party and PMLN and all the other political parties have been given a free hand, but the level playing field is not available uh, to PTI. We have not had a, held a single rally uh, since the past four months. Mm -hmm. Not a single rally, uh, not even a small gathering uh, of people. I, uh, a few days ago, we had this um, uh, idea that we'll have a conference within our head office in PTI's head office in Islamabad. And um, when we were about to hold that meeting, uh, the, it was sealed. Uh, so we couldn't even hold a meeting inside our head office. Ali, how have, you, how have you been tackling that? Because obviously Imran Khan is in prison and, and we just heard there from Maria about, about the huge, huge youth vote that you're seeing in this election. I understand that the party has been, been trying new methods to, to reach voters using things like AI and TikTok? Yes, we have a, a very good social media team. And so we are using technology to reach the people. We are using technology to ensure that they know who to vote for because there are about hundreds of symbols uh, all over Pakistan that have been allotted to our candidates. So we've got an application where people can go and find out which particular uh, candidate belongs to PTI and what is his symbol in which area. So we are trying uh, all the possible tools that are there available on the social media to try and educate the people and ensure that they can vote. But see, in spite of all these problems, what I'd like to say is that we are in a position right now today to actually contest these elections through our nominee candidates, even mm -hmm. though we don't have a symbol. We believe uh, in the concept that an idea, when a time has come for an idea, no one can stop it. Well, let Election me ask Javed how popular that idea is at the moment, because I was looking at some of the opinion polling, the latest Gallup poll has Imran Khan's approval rating remarkably consistent despite all of the court cases and the convictions. As you say, he's just been handed down another three sentences just in the last week. Do you think, Javed, that, that the court cases which the party is saying are politically motivated, has that actually been fueling more support for him? Uh, before going to Imran Khan, <laughs> I would like to mention uh, uh, some comment about the uh, debate of my colleagues. Actually, I don't think so. Our politician will learn a lesson. Uh, <clears throat> there was actually a, a bi-party uh, uh, system for last over three decades. They kept blaming each other about the controversy. They kept blaming each other about uh, unknown hands uh, to support uh, any other party. A loser party always blamed the winner party. Now, the, uh, another phenomena involved in the elections, uh, in the political, uh, uh, you can say, landscape, that was PTI. PTI has uh, come up with a different uh, dimensions in, the, uh, in, uh, in, in this frame. We have seen that uh, in, uh, nowadays, uh, uh, you can say Imran Khan is facing so many cases. Recently, he was sentenced to 14 years uh, imprisonment. Their workers are so much charged. 
but uh, one thing is that that they are contesting each other against each other in some of the constituencies this thing will badly damage them uh, in uh, different constituencies and uh, opponent parties will take benefit of it i have already mentioned that uh, three factors are very interesting and uh, are differentiating this election from uh, all the previous elections first one is uh, about the turnout yeah. many of the young people will contest in uh, will uh, uh, cast their votes women participants uh, you uh, i will mention yeah. some of the figures that pakistan muslim league uh, 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 suppose pti has given around 58 awarded 58 tickets uh, to the women uh, candidates 28 in national assembly pakistan people's party has given 35 11 in the national assembly pakistan muslim league noon has given 28 and 13 in national assembly and even a religious political party has given 29 uh, 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 awarded tickets to 29 uh, candidates female candidates and four in uh, national assembly so yeah. this thing will make change uh, about uh, uh, so, sorry javed i i want to just uh, sorry to interrupt you there I, i want to focus a little bit on on the leadership of of the parties because there's obviously been a lot of talk as well despite the the broader changes that we're seeing in, in terms of the youth in the electorate and and the women that might see more representation there's obviously a, a huge contest going on between nawaz sharif and and imran khan's parties and my understanding from the, the latest polling is that the ppp your party maria may end up as as kingmaker and and political pundits are su- suggesting that nawaz sharif's party is the one who is going to win out your leader the the political leader of your party who's just 35 obviously has has a lot to say to the youth he's also said that he would find himself caught between and i'm quoting it that the devil and the deep blue sea if he was forced to choose between the pti and and nawaz sharif's party do you have a sense of which way that's going to go yeah um chairman bilawal bhutto zardari actually um he i, I think uh, soon after the sudden demise of his beloved mother benazir bhutto his political career started because um, he was he was a co um, chairperson for the party since 2008 and uh, in 2000 and exactly 10 years back 2014 he started taking um, interest in the party uh, when he finished his studies and um, he started campaigning for pakistan people's party party um, uh, cross pakistan in 2016 we start we witnessed um, starting his career from kashmir um, by campaigning uh, and going every um, uh, uh, corner um, from um, kashmir to gilgit baltistan to pakistan and you know uh, he became a, a member of national mm-hmm. assembly in 2018 and in 2022 we witnessed him uh by serving as a, a foreign minister of pakistan and he visited uh, and he represented uh, pakistan in a different countries um so uh, you know uh, we cannot say he doesn't have an experience or anything when people say it uh, i think it's not fair because he is young and he is a hope f- for um, uh, sure. y- Marie, young people I, I as well so i was talking about his experience um, yeah, i was asking uh, about which way he... you think his political leanings might lie yeah. if he was forced to choose of course he comes from a very uh, a correct democratic family his ideas his visions are very much clear more than anybody else because he has seen this politics uh, that's in his genes and he has witnessed he has he's been serving because he had no choice he is there to complete the vision of his beloved mother um, who was a visionary leader so i think he, um, he will choose a right path uh, correct but for the uh, p- prosperous pakistan mm-hmm. progressive pakistan this is our agenda and he le- f- f- mm-hmm. le- last few weeks he has been talking about the main eight agenda p- points which he has men- mentioned in the manifesto of pakistan people's okay. party I- which serves actually from the t- Maria, sorry, to I, the don't, i don't i don't want to get into into the, the pa- campaigning uh, aspect here I, i do want to take a a bit of a step back and look at the broader political landscape yeah. so just taking a minute here This is an election in a state where no prime minister by my yeah. by my recollection has actually ever yeah. finished their term. So back in 2018 it was Nawaz yeah. Sharif who was 
being convicted and being barred from running. Now it's Imran Khan. They've essentially, I mean, lots of people have pointed this yeah. out, they've essentially swapped yeah. positions this time round. This is obviously a country where the military wields a huge amount of influence. So, Ali, let, let me ask you, right now, who do you think gets to decide who runs? Look, we believe uh, uh, right now, I was going to uh, finish my last, uh, when I was talking just previously, I want, what I wanted to say was, and to answer your question really, these are the last four days now left for elections. And elections belong to the people. When you are voting, there is no question uh, that you uh, have a right to vote and no one can stop you. Uh, you can vote for who you want to. So uh, uh, the issue is after the polling. Once the polling takes place, the question arises that uh, will there be a government which will be allowed to be formed according to the will of the people or will we see uh, another cut and paste job? Uh, as we've seen in the past history sometimes. So we are expecting this time something different. And the reason why we're expecting something different, which will not be able to, no one can control that, is that uh, more than 50% of the population is uh, youth, hmm. under uh, 24, 26 years, who are idealistic, who've got a very clear picture of who they want to vote for. And this time they want to vote for PTI. There is no question uh, in their minds that who their leader needs to be. And because they see that somebody is being victimized, the sympathy vote is also increasing daily. Uh, so what we expect, and that is PTI's format, we are not going to have a compromise or a coalition with any political party. You asked the question uh, whether People's Party wants to join PTI or PMLN or any other party, let me say that we have decided that we will not be joining any coalition. Mm -hmm. What we expect people to do is vote for us as a complete majority party so that we can carry forth an agenda that Pakistan needs. We believe that to carry the, out that agenda, because there has to be some surgical economic decisions that need to be made, we need a very popular leader and we need all the institutions to stand behind him. All the institutions of Pakistan need to stand behind that popular leader. Only then the country can move forward. And therefore, we want and we believe that this time people are going to vote PTI in power as a majority party. And once that is done, we will, of course, want a very strong opposition from the other political parties, which mm -hmm. is a good democratic step. But well, we would want to do surgeries with the institutions standing behind us. Well, we, we, we don't well, have any conflict with any any institution. We don't have any conflict with any political party except on the there's, concept that so we There's want. clearly a, a huge amount at stake in this election and we'll certainly be watching the vote here at Al Jazeera very, very closely indeed. But for now, we'll leave it there. Thank you to all of our guests, Maria Iqbal Tarana, Senator Said Ali Zafa and Javed Rahman. And thank you too for watching. Remember, you can see this program again anytime by visiting our website, that's aljazeera.com. For further discussion, do go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. Remember, you can also join the conversation on X. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Nastasia Tay, and the whole team here in Doha. Bye for now.